In chapter 9, we're going to discuss the properties and reactions of alkynes. We're going to start with just a little bit of common nomenclature, since we already covered the IUPAC nomenclature of alkynes in the first semester. The only common name that we need to know for alkynes is the name of this molecule, which is the smallest alkyl you can have. It's a two-carbon alkyne. The common name for this is acetylene. It's a very commonly used industrial chemical, and so you're very likely to encounter this name. The IUPAC name for this would be ethine, two-carbon alkyne. We're also going to look at classes of alkynes. There's two important classes of alkynes, two ways that alkynes are sort of categorized. Terminal alkynes have at least one hydrogen attached. So they can have a structure like this, which is of course the structure of acetylene or ethyne, where there's a hydrogen on each of the two carbons of the alkyne, or if the alkyne is part of a longer carbon chain, it would have some type of carbon group attached on one of the two carbons of the triple bond, and it would have a hydrogen on the other one. Internal alkynes are triple bonds that are in the middle of a carbon chain, and so therefore they have a carbon group attached to each of the carbons of the alkyne. Because the carbon uh, of the alkyne already has three bonds as part of the carbon-carbon triple bond, it only has room for one other substituent. And so, in the case where there's a carbon on each side, there's no hydrogens directly attached to the alkyne. The main thing that's important about this is that in a couple of reactions, there's some subtle differences between the way that terminal alkynes and internal alkynes react, and there's at least one reaction that only functions with terminal alkynes. A quick review of the structure and bonding in alkynes. If we look at the carbons of an alkyne, we can see that they should have a steric number of two because the three bonds, the three pairs of electrons in the triple bond are all going to function together as one group and then there'll be another electron group on the other side. Because they have a steric number of two, that is going to give them a linear geometry and it turns out also a linear shape. That's all, that also means that there's going to be a 180 degree angle between the triple bond and the other group that's attached to an alkyne carbon. Because they have a linear geometry, the carbons of the triple bond are going to be sp hybridized. So we can see that here. The alkyne carbons are sp hybridized and the triple bond then is formed by an sp to sp single bond and then two pi bonds because when a carbon is sp hybridized it will have one p orbital in one plane, and then another p orbital perpendicular to that. So it will use the first p orbital to make a bond with a p orbital on the other carbon of the alkyne, and then perpendicular to that there will be a second pi bond between this p orbital and that p orbital. The interesting thing about this then is that these pi bonds are perpendicular to each other. As a result, they don't interact so that each will behave similar to just a pi bond of an alkene, which is a double bond that has only one pi bond. And so in fact, we're gonna see that many of the reactions of alkynes basically involve two alkene-like addition reactions.
Another important feature of alkynes is the acidity of terminal alkynes. So as we mentioned before, terminal alkynes have carbon-hydrogen bonds on uh, the alkyne carbon. And it turns out that these carbon-hydrogen bonds are much more, uh, much more acidic than a typical alkane carbon-hydrogen bond. So if we look here, for example, this is an alkane, just a typical generic alkane. And if we look at a bond between this carbon and that hydrogen, that hydrogen would have a pKa of about 50, which means that a base could remove it. If a base removed it, we would form this conjugate base, and we would form a molecule of conjugate acid. The lone pair that is formed by removing or deprotonating this alkane is has a, a lone pair in an sp3 hybridized orbital. If we compare that to a terminal alkyne, the alkyne to hydrogen bond has a pKa of about 25. So again, a base could remove that hydrogen, deprotonating the alkyne. We would get this species right here, which would have a lone pair on one of the alkyne carbons, would have a negative charge, and as we already mentioned, the alkyne carbons are sp hybridized, so this lone pair would be in an sp hybridized orbital. What we see then is that this um, alkyne, this acetylide ion, is more stable than the corresponding negative ion, carbanion, that we get from an alkane because the sp orbital has more s character which pulls those electrons closer to the nucleus and therefore their potential energy goes down because they are closer to the positive charges in the nucleus. As a result, terminal alkynes can be deprotonated by strong bases. So for example, when we use a very strong base, such as this base, sodium NH2, which is called sodium amide. When these bases are used, the equilibrium will actually favor the deprotonated form of the alkyne. Here's an example. Here's sort of a representative terminal alkyne, assuming we have some type of carbon group here. If we were to treat that with sodium amide, which I've written in its ionic form, the sodium ion would basically be a spectator, and this amide ion would become the base. The amide ion would reach out, grab the hydrogen off of the alkyne, a pair of electrons would go on to carbon, and we would be left with this negatively charged acetylide ion. The sodium ion would then become attracted to that, so we could write this as sodium and this acetylide. We would also form a molecule of the conjugate acid of amide ion, which is actually ammonia. Now, we can use the pKa's of these species to calculate K equilibrium for this reaction. K equilibrium is equal to 10 to the product acid pKa minus reactant acid pKa. So our product acid is ammonia with a pKa of 38. Our reactant acid is acetylene or actually a terminal alkyne with a pKa of 25. 38 minus 25 is 13. So K equilibrium would be equal to 10 to the 13th. The significance of this is that K equilibrium is actually a ratio. It's a ratio of the concentration of products divided by the concentration of reactants. So when we have a large positive exponent on our K equilibrium, what that really means is that we have a large number of products per one reactant. And so 10 to the 13 products per one reactant. 
we would say that this is essentially completely deprotonated, given that the number of decimal places that it would be required to measure the concentration of reactants would be 13. We almost never work with 13 significant figures. So it would look to us like it was essentially zero reactants left over. The deprotonated form of the terminal alkyne, that would be this species right here, is called an acetylide ion. So this derives from acetylene, but then they've replaced the ene ending with IDE, which is an ending that typically denotes a negative ion. As mentioned before, terminal alkynes are more acidic than other car carbon compounds because of the increased amount of S character in the alkyne CH bond. 